What's up, friends? Happy Sunday. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so excited that you are with us today. Today, we're going to be investigating the resurrection of Jesus, what we talked about last week. We are going to be even talking to a real life detective, and we're going to be figuring out who ate all my candy. Let's get started. jumping into our lesson and what we're going to be talking about uh, but we've got a little situation going on at my house uh, I went to go get some of my Sour Patch Kids my favorite little Easter candy and uh, I went to go get some and they were all gone and I know that I didn't take them I know that my wife who's filming right now did not take them uh, and so I have a good feeling that uh, I do know who, but we're gonna be uh, detectives for a second. We're gonna follow the clues and see if we can find out for ourselves. So I, I see a little trail that my friends left me, uh, all gone and empty. 
Uh, thanks a lot. Ooh, another one. Ooh, this takes me to our, our no right for today. What we're gonna actually be digging into is Mark 16 and John 20 and 21. It's gonna be when Jesus appears to uh, his disciples. He appears to Peter uh, and he appears to over 500 people. Uh, we're gonna be looking at that and why we can uh, know that uh, what we celebrated last week on Easter is real and that we can really believe it and know it. Let's keep going. I've got some more. Look at this. It's three packs. We're down here. All right. And keep on going. I don't think they're in there. Uh, here we go. Ooh, gets us to our think right for today is <clears throat> our think right is going to be in 1 Corinthians 15, 4 and 5. And it says that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures and that he appeared to Peter and the 12. Uh, this is awesome. 1 Corinthians 15, 4 and 5. Let's keep rolling. I got any more clues over here? Ooh, there we go. We've got some more back here. Don't know why a baby's right there, but there is one. Our do right today is that I will know that Jesus gave evidence proving he is alive. We're gonna be looking at that evidence that Jesus is alive today. Here we go. Let's keep rolling, let's keep rolling. It sounds like we're getting even a little bit closer to the guys who took my Sour Patch Kids. Another one. Our feel right for today is that uh, I can feel confident knowing that Jesus is alive. Uh, I, like I've said uh, on Easter, we talked about how, uh, we talked about Jesus raising from the dead and how we celebrate that. But why can we really, really, really believe it? Not just because of the empty tomb, but because of countless other reasons. And we're gonna check those out today. Let's see if we can find out who's got my Sour Patch Kids. I think I know who. Following the clues. Oh! You guys are the ones who stole my Sour Patch Kids, aren't you? Did you eat my Sour Patch Kids? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's find out. We'll, uh, we're going to jump into a video. We're going to check it out, have a little bit of fun. I'll see you back here and we will uh, talk about it some more. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. This is Jesus. Hey, -o. Jesus is the Savior of the world and the Son of God. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He healed many people from their sickness performed many miracles, like calming storms, and even raised people from the dead. But some people did not like what Jesus was doing, and they put him to death. He died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. For three days, Jesus' body laid in that tomb, and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body, found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! For he was risen, he was alive. Woohoo! Huh? Hey -o. Ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. Jesus told his disciples that he did all the things that God had told everyone that he would do, and the disciples understood what he was saying. Yep, that makes sense. He told them that he would send the Holy Spirit, just as God had promised to be their helper. Sounds good. After Jesus had spent 40 days with the disciples and appeared to many people, hey, that's it. he led the disciples to a place called Bethany. Jesus blessed the disciples and told them to go out and tell the whole world about him and the good news of forgiveness and make disciples of them. Then he said, be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Then Jesus was taken into heaven to sit at the right hand of God. 
We are joined right now by a great friend of mine, uh, the smartest guy I know. His name is Matt, Detective Matt Thornton. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, we're so glad to have you here. Honored to be here. Anything I can do to help. <laughs> we love it. Are you actually at the police station right now? Yes, I am. I'm at my desk. Awesome. And you are, you guys still are solving cases as we speak, even though yeah. uh, we're all quarantined. You guys still are essential employees and have to get out and, and do work. As we speak, I have two armed robberies today and stolen car. All right. All right. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to, I've got some questions for you that we are going to jump right into. And uh, um, if you could just kind of help us see how that uh, being a detective uh, like you are, um, is, is kind of a great skill that all of us kind of uh, need and uh, we can all use some valuable tips from you. So um, let's say one day you get a phone call, okay? That uh -huh. is the, the gas station right down the street from the police station. Uh, it, it got all of its candy bars, all, all the candy bars got stolen and taken out of there. What in the world is the first thing you guys do? Uh, first thing we gotta do is we gotta get there. We gotta get to the scene so we can find out exactly for ourselves what had happened and uh go ahead yeah Yo, you start so you kind of start studying what happened what um how do you do that how, how do you like if the if the if the guy who stole all the candy bars is gone how do you start studying the scene what i do is i bring my handy notebook right here we bring this in and we start taking notes on uh where he came from, where did he enter the store, where did he, what did he touch, what did he take, who saw him. Uh, we get as much information as we possibly can from that scene. And so, uh, awesome. And so, how many times do you walk through uh, one thing happening? Like, hey, the candy bars are gone. Uh, how many times are you guys going to go there? How long does that take? Um, oh, it could take it could take hours, days, and weeks. It's sometimes when we get new information, um, and depending on what the scene is telling me, the scene tells you everything. Um, so you could be there uh, multiple times in one day. You could be there for every day for for a couple weeks straight. Okay, and so you guys just keep kind of going through over and over, looking really closely. Um, trying to get new perspective. Is it just one person going through that? Or do you kind of uh, maybe bounce ideas off some other detectives and you guys kind oh, of work as a team? We, we work as a team. Uh, we, go, we, have, we all have the, the, uh, a, lo a long, uh, large level of training. Um, so we, we bounce, we, we, we get different perspectives. You always got to run it by your boss to okay the charges, to okay um, uh, verify what uh, had occurred. Okay, and you, you said uh, you talked to to people, other people, not just detectives. And, and um, you talk to just any people or do you talk to people that you think may have been actually there? Um, and how do you decide who are the people you should talk to? We find out that's, one, that's the most important thing to, to any case is, in, is we call it an eyewitness um, who could give an independent statement uh, that, hey, I saw this this can help lead to, to who did this or hey, I saw someone so leave the scene uh, uh, or I was in there right when it happened. Uh, you, you find witnesses are the most important thing in a case. I, I, this question just kind of popped into my brain. Do you have any um, witnesses ever? How, how do you know if a witness is giving you true information or if it's uh, not true information? How, how do you, you know? You question. You question the validity uh, of their story. You see if what they're saying makes sense. You make sure that they were actually there and they know what they're talking about. Um, you make sure that they, they are speaking clearly and, and their story adds up um, just like anything else. Okay, so you kind, of, you kind of match it up with other people's stories at yes, their... Yes, exactly. MC. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I like that. I think that's really uh, awesome. Uh, one, this kind of is a weird question. But when you're there studying the scene, do you ever think like the bad guy? Yes, I actually do. You step into their shoes. You think to yourself, okay, what would I have done if I, was, if I had just stole all this stuff? Where would I have gone? Where's the first place I would have run? Where would I put the stuff? Uh, would I look at anybody in the face as I ran away? Uh, things yes. like that. You always have to uh, put yourself in their shoes. 
who would steal a thousand candy bars? I mean, somebody who <laughs> must really like candy. Um, yes. And so uh, how can you, uh, th- thanks for doing this, um, but how, I, I, the reason I, I got you on here is because I think uh, being a detective, you kind of have these skills that I wish I had is that um, they can make us better at studying uh, the Bible and studying about Jesus. Uh-huh. And, and can you tell me how being a detective has helped you study the Bible and study Jesus a little bit? The most important thing that the area that it's helped me is the thing that we call evidence. Um, if you go by eyewitnesses, if you can sum up a scene, if you can sum up a history of, of, of what of events that took place, uh, if you give me enough evidence, uh, I'm good at gathering it. And I can tell you that, yes, I believe that this actually happened. Got it. And, and so digging through the Bible. Uh, and I know that you uh, are uh, definitely uh, believe that the resurrection happened, that what we celebrated this past Sunday on Easter is, is true and that it is life changing. I know this because I know you, you're a good friend of mine, and I know that you love Jesus. Um, but uh, I know that there was a time in your life where uh, you didn't and, and you started to read the Bible and start to think about it. What was kind of um, the, the one, one or two reason that you were like, okay, I, I can believe it. There, there's a ton of reasons, but what's the one that kind of broke the camel's back for you? The one that broke the camel's back was the amount um, of people that verified. I, I need one witness to prove my case. Like these cases, you'll see all, these, all of these folders. I got them right here. I got all these cases. I need one good witness for me to bring a charge and to prove a case. The Bible says that there was 500 witnesses that saw Jesus after he rose from the dead. That's 500 times more proof um, than I need to solve one of my cases. That's the biggest one to me. Boom, case closed. I, I, I love that. And I think, that all, I think that's such a, a great one. Um, there's so many, uh, you know, with, uh-huh. with him showing Thomas the holes in his hands and him uh-huh. eating with, with his disciples and finding them and just uh, all of the work that they then went on to do um, because of the resurrected, because they knew it was true. And so uh-huh. um, I think that's awesome. And uh, one last question, our last question is, um, do police ever just go, e- even when a case is solved or even when um, it may be unsolved, do you ever just go, eh, I'm done thinking about that? Or do no. you just forget about it and on to the next one? No, when, when a case is unsolved, it, 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 you, want, you, you, you hunger for it. You want to know more. You want to dig in further. You want to further examine um, the evidence in the case. What can we do to get this case proven? Um, so it never leaves you. You take it home. You live with it. Even when you're off work, you think about it. Um, you, 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 it's just in our nature. We have to find that evidence, and we have to know the full truth. Uh, and, and I love that because it just ties so much to uh, what we've talked about uh, with our, our IC kids this week and how um, we are digging in and how Jesus gives us not just an empty tomb, but he goes, hey, here's this, here's this, here's this, here's this. Uh-huh. You can know that I was raised from the dead, um, not just because your parents told you, uh, but you really can know. And, and uh, I think that's awesome. And I'm so grateful that you came on today. Uh, Mr. Matt, we thank you for uh, taking some time away from your busy schedule. And uh, we loved having you. Thanks so much, buddy. I'm honored honored to help. Love you guys. All right. I am going to be turning it over to uh, my my friends, uh, the Satyrs. And they have this week's IC Kids Challenge for you. Uh, you are going, they're going to be showing you how to do it. Uh, we are going to be making... Uh, invisible ink uh, going along with being some detectives and we're going to be writing out uh, whatever you choose you can choose your favorite bible verse you can pick uh, just a fun little message about jesus and uh, it's really cool if you don't uh, have some of these things you can go uh, on the internet and find a bajillion ways to make invisible ink here are a few hi welcome to this week's i see kids challenge mr Sater and i What are you doing? Oh, I'm looking for clues. I'm looking all around. I found this. I think it's a clue. It is a clue. 
Hold on. I think you need this juice to help detect what it says. Hmm. I can't wait to see what it says. What you doing there? Hmm. All right, use that. So I put this Q-tip in and rub it around? Yep. Look, it says Jesus is alive. Now what are you doing? Now I need evidence. Just because a sign says it on there doesn't mean it's true. Just because someone would tell me, I need to find another clue. So you want some evidence that Jesus is alive? I want evidence. Well, I could give you evidence. It's all right here in the Bible. I like to look in the Gospels, the stories of Jesus' life, and at the end, it talks about how Jesus died and how he was resurrected and how he's alive. He actually walked and talked and even ate with his friends. So if you're telling me that you found that in the Bible, then I know it's true. There's my evidence. How'd you get, how'd you make this message? Oh, that's awesome that you asked. Let me show you. This is our IC Kids Challenge for this week. Here's what you need. You need some paper, some baking soda, some water, a bowl, a measuring spoon of any kind, and some Q-tips. Let me show you how you do it. You start with the baking soda and the measuring spoon. You take one spoonful of the baking soda and you put it in the bowl. Then you take the same amount of water and you put that in the bowl. Now, you can use a Q-tip to stir it up. You can even pull off some of this fuzzy stuff to make it a little less poofy once you get it wet. And you just stir it up. You take a piece of paper, and now you write your message. And now you wait for it to dry. Here's one I wrote earlier, and now it's already dry. Do you want to see what it says, Mr. Seder? Sure. Oh wait, not this. We need to use, remember, to decode it, we need to use juice, dark juice of some kind. It doesn't really have to be a certain flavor, but dark. Or you can even use berries to decode it. You can rub the berries on and figure out what the message is. So you rub it right over the, where you think the message is and it will appear for you. Well, while Mr. Sater is doing that, let me tell you some other options in case you don't have juice or baking soda at your house. You could also make invisible ink with vinegar and a little water, lemon juice and a little water, you could even use honey and a little water. And you could also use milk or orange juice and a little water. But these, when you decode them with those ideas, you don't use the juice, you hold it up to like a light bulb. The heat is, helps you decode it. So that's another way you can make invisible ink if you don't have baking soda and water at your house. Let's see how Mr. Sater's doing. Aha, uh -huh. I think I've got it. Here it comes. Are you ready, I see kids? What does it say? It says, now you try. Well, this is a pretty fun way to find evidence that Jesus died and rose and walked with us. And we can know that for fact because it's in the Bible. Now you try that at home. And don't forget, send it to hashtag I see kids challenge. <laughs> we'll be checking to see how you do. Have a fun week. Thanks so much guys for tuning in and uh, following along and having some fun with us this Sunday. Uh, thank you to Detective Matt Thornton for calling in and helping us investigate a little bit. Thank you to the Saders for uh, making uh, some, some awesome IC Kids challenges for us. Uh, and like I said, keep them coming in. Use the hashtag IC Kids Challenge. Take pictures, send them in. We cannot wait to see what you made with your invisible ink uh, this week. And uh, Keep them coming. If you haven't followed along on our IC Kids Facebook page, make sure you do that. Uh, follow along and have some fun. Um, and uh, we cannot wait to see you next Sunday and see what you made uh, this week. We're going to check out some uh, pics of what you guys have done, some, some resurrection gardens from last week. Uh, we love them. They're awesome. We love it. Can't wait to see you guys. Bye-bye.